Music is dope. That's the only line I felt I could really start this video off with. To be honest, I'm a huge music fan. I like everything from jazz to rock to rap to metal to folk. People creating sounds, all harmoniously arranged into these pieces of ear candy that transcend generations sometimes. And they do it all from nothing, from a big empty void inside their head. Boom, a wild song appears. How does that happen? Why does that happen? I don't know, but it's cool. And that's all that matters. Now, one particular genre of music that holds a very dear, very special place in my heart, video game music. It's kind of unlike anything else. It isn't really crafted in the same way most ordinary songs are. It's more akin to maybe what you would consider a jingle to a certain extent. I know that's not exactly true, it's a hard thing to define, but video game music I can imagine would be a complete bitch to write. You need to have a tune that is catchy, not too overbearing, fits the vibe of exactly what you're doing in the game at that moment, can loop endlessly without getting annoying, and bonus points if it's an iconically recognizable hit that transcends even video games themselves. Enter the pimp of our story, Koji Kondo. Koji was hired on with Nintendo in 1984 and was the first person there to specialize in musical composition. Punch-Out was the first game he worked on, but what got him known, what got him famous, what put his name on that big golden wall of musical dopeness, <laughs> Super Mario Brothers and The Legend of Zelda. Two games within the pantheon of video game greats that have such recognizable tunes and melodies that even the normiest of normies know what they are. Since he started at Nintendo, Koji has had his name on a stupid amount of titles, composing some of the most memorable and jaw-dropping music in video game history the majority of which were in Mario and Zelda games. Now, I was personally raised in the Super Nintendo N64 era. I got an N64 when I was 10 with Super Mario 64 and shortly after Ocarina of Time. They were all I could think about. They were all I would do for a probably unhealthy amount of time, <laughs> if you would ask my parents, but I have a crazy amount of nostalgia and childhood memory built up around these games and they are tied to me now, in the present, by Koji Kondo's music. Every time I hear this, I remember turning on Super Mario 64 as a kid for the first time and having my mind blown at this stretchy 3D face. Every time I hear this, I remember the sense of awe and wonder I had as I was about to embark on the most epic journey of my childhood. Every time I hear this, I remember tearing all the fucking skin off my hand as I tried to swing Bowser around by rotating the goddamn joystick with the center of my palm for some reason. These tunes that Koji Koji wrote, and video game music in general can be so powerful like that, so affecting, so much a part of the biggest memories and times in our lives. Nostalgia aside though, the versatility shown in these soundtracks is equally as awe-inspiring to me. You know, if somebody came up to you and was like, hey man, what's up, I need some music for this chill ass platforming water level here what do you got? And you came back to him with this? Well then you would be Koji Kondo and you would be a genius. This man was able to just craft the most fitting tunes for any particular scenario. Oh, you're in a snow level? Well here's what snow sounds like, kid. Ah, a fairy forest village I see. I bet you did not know that that sounds like this. Oh, you thought this was a children's game? Well, this is what shitting your pants sounds like. Sometimes I feel like all of this is uh, something that may be lost on people to a certain degree because these songs perform their functions so well that they're often lost in the background of gameplay, but somehow simultaneously stuck in your brain forever. This just really goes to show the subtle artistry on display here. You know, writing good music is hard. But writing good music that is also perfectly, thematically suited to whatever you're doing time and time again, that is some next level OG shit. And that is some Koji Kondo shit. All in all, video game music is a powerful, awe-inspiring tool that can be utilized in amazing ways. And Koji Kondo is a man who has proven over and over and over that he is a master at utilizing those tools extraordinarily. 
So the next time you're playing a game, take a closer look if you haven't really noticed before at just how strongly the music itself is narrating the game and the experience for you. And especially take some time to soak in the very beautiful and very wonderful musical storytelling of Mr. Koji Kondo. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one. And hey, if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe because I try to put a new one out every single week. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I do that and comment down below to let me know what your favorite Koji Kondo song is or if you have any memories about his music in any way. Thank you so much for watching. Love ya. Bye bye.